Hi everyone, and welcome to the 73rd episode of Dragon Quest Slime Time, a Dragon's Den podcast. This is Pendy. And this is Paul, also known as East X Twitch. So this is your first Slime Time Prime episode. You'll be co-hosting East X. That's right. The accommodations seem pretty nice here. I know, right? I get to come here every once in a while after slumming it and tactfully die or being a guest on SideQuest. Wait a minute, Robin Leach. Tactfully die isn't that bad. You did get that pool installed. True, true. But check this out. Slime Time Prime even has a jacuzzi. Impressive. Vaulted ceilings, fireplace, walk-in closets, a sunroom, even a wine cellar. We've got the works here. What's this cabinet over here? It looks like someone took a knife and carved youngest was here on the side. No, 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 no. Don't ever open that. You do not want to know what's in there. Okay. Anyway, I'm all ready to play the Dragon Quest Die mobile game, A Hero's Bonds. Legend has it that I played it a little bit at the beginning, but fell off. I'm all set to continue my adventure now, though. Ooh, a about that. What? I just need to re-download the app and where is it? Well, you see, it died last month. What? You mean the bonds are broken? Indeed they are, my friend. And we're here to memorialize the game in this episode. I guess in this case, once you pop, you can stop. So, East X and I never played a whole lot of the game throughout its run, so we brought on someone who has. We'd like to welcome Silver Alpha Lion to the show. Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Silver Appleton. How did you come up with the concept for your username? And do you mind if we just call you Silver? Sure, that's feel free. That's the way usually a lot of people call me. So my username comes from the PS2 RPG Radiata stories, and one of the main villains is named Aphelion, the Silver Dragon. And that's a game that's very near and dear to my heart. And I just thought that that's, that's kind of like a unique sounding name. It's a fun little action RPG from Tri-Ace. It's very charming. Oh, my God. So I screwed up your name royally. I, I said Alpha Lion. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. A lot of people don't know how to like pronounce it at first. It's fine. Though. Billion. Okay, yes. that's cool. We'll just call you Silver and then we avoid <laughs> the issue. How did you get into Dragon Quest? I played the original Dragon Warrior Monsters ages ago in 2000. So my dad had taken me to Toys R Us and he was like, hey, just uh, you know, pick out a game. And we'll... and that one, for some reason, I don't know why, but it just really caught my eye. He sounds like a rad dad. What's your favorite mainline Dragon Quest game so far? I would have to pick Dragon Quest eight just because it really captured my imagination when i played it and i think that uh, level five the developer they did a really good job of bringing the charm of the older games to the 3d world yes i hear really good things about jessica i mean that game <laughs> yes a very good game one of my favorites as well so how about the uh, spin-offs what's your favorite dragon quest spin-off probably anything monsters you know, since that's what i started out with so that's that's kind of just been like very near and dear to me it's like kind of going back home so to speak oh okay did you ever play dragon quest monster super light i didn't i think by the time that i had like known about it i had already like shut, like the english version or whatever had already shut down oh uh, okay uh-huh i should probably play those monsters games too well of the dragon quest games you haven't played yet which one are you most interested in playing right now i'm over here anxiously waiting to see if we're gonna get dragon quest 10 offline and seeing if it's it's ever gonna leave japan but i think i'm probably i might break down in like a year or so and just import it just to be able to experience 10 like some way yes and i'm going to i think after i come back from my uh trip to japan i'm taking in a few weeks i'm going to try online because they just released a translating tool that updated all the cutscenes for versions three and four and the, the rest is like if you talk to npcs and stuff like that it's like machine language translation or something like that so i think i'm actually gonna i'm gonna break down myself and try the online versions you know i'm hoping that they'll someone will come out with like a translation patch for the offline version as well. That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, we all hope for an international release in the future, of course. But, you know, getting away from that, what would you say your favorite monster is in the Dragon Quest series? My favorite monsters are Drakis. It's such a great and simple design. And I remember playing the original Monsters game and having a Draki named Drac in my party, sort of in like the first like dungeon or so, like you can recruit 
Drakis. And also in the first Monsters Joker game, you get a choice of like which which is like your starting monster. And I always pick Draki. Nice. But I also have I also I have a special place in my heart for Snowbird or Blizzardy, the old name. Mm. Blizzardy, I did not know that. It was the old name that they used for the original Monsters game. Ah. Well, in response to your top favorite, Draki is certainly the opposite of Tacky. Who is your favorite character in the series, though? My favorite character is Jessica from A. So when it comes to RPGs, I like I love having mage type characters in my party. I like her design. I like her character growth throughout the story, and I like how powerful she can become in the game. Ah, a man of culture, I see. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, my, it, what's funny though, my wife is the same way when it comes to video games in general. She loves like the mage type characters as well. That's what she prefers. Do you have a favorite mechanic in the series, such as monster collecting, job classes, casinos, etc.? Yeah, I love having monster companions. It's one of my favorite parts in 5 and 8, but I also really like alchemy and item crafting. It's a lot of fun, too. Right on. You've been a longtime regular at the Dragon's Den, our forums that Pendy compulsively visits. How did you discover the site and become a member of the community? Oh, boy. I actually didn't make an account on the forums until probably like 2009 or 10 when Dragon Quest Nine came out, but I had been visiting the site regularly since 2000. Oh, wow. Um, I probably just found it like randomly like searching on Google, but yeah, my, so my dad used to go to take university classes and me and my brother would go like hang out at the library. And at that time, we didn't really have internet at the home, at home. So we would, you know, we would go at the library to use the internet there. And yeah, I, I, it's funny. I remember using like the college computers to look up the Dragon's Den forum at the time. Oh man, I was, I was almost the same way because I think the site opened in 97 and I started visiting it in 98 and I was in college at the time and my roommate happened to have a computer. And that's how I got to you know visit the den as well as you know, co- a computer in college. <laughs> cool. So how long have you been in a, a fan of the Adventure of Die story? And how did you get into that in particular? I'm uh, definitely kind of a latecomer to, to Adventure of Die. It, was, it wasn't it was really like on my radar until the new anime came out. Like I had seen bits and pieces of it, like, you know, over the years, just, just sort of like through osmosis of being a Dragon Quest fan. And I think probably like I'm sure sure like everyone has seen those those screen caps of the priest girl at the beginning of the story she's asking like oh like do you have any she's like pointing to a slime and she's saying like oh like do you have any cuter monsters in this something, something like that mad. yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah i'm sure everyone's I, i'm sure everyone's seen that screen cap at some time in their internet lifetime that's our zarbon but hey don't feel bad about only getting into it recently i still have to remind pendy what adventure of die is and we record a podcast about it now that we know more about our guests let's get into our main topic, the unfortunate closure of Dragon Quest Die, A Hero's Bonds. Yes, A Hero's Bonds was an action RPG gotcha mobile game. It was unique for Dragon Quest in that it was the first Dragon Quest gotcha mobile game to receive a worldwide simultaneous release. Not only that, but it was also the first worldwide simultaneous release with Japan of a new Dragon Quest game as it preceded games like Dragon Quest Treasures that did the same thing. Worldwide markets received similar releases in the past, but only of up updated versions of already released games, such as Dragon Quest XI S. A Hero's Bonds started service on September 28th, 2021 in Japan and worldwide. It unfortunately ended service on April 26, 2023. Pour so, one out for A Hero's Bonds. Silver, did you play the game from launch? And what were your first impressions of it? Uh, I didn't play exactly from launch. I think I was kind of dig- dragging my heels a little bit just because it was another gotcha game and I didn't want to like burn myself out playing too many games on my phone. Yeah, that's understandable because I know, you know, you and I both play TAC as mm-hmm. well. Who is your favorite character in the Die universe? Uh, my favorite character from Die is Ma'am. Oh, nice. Me too. So what do you what do you uh, like about uh, th- that character? Uh, I think that she just, it feels like she just goes through like the most growth through the story. Like I like how she, like in the middle of the story, obviously like she she goes and becomes a martial artist when she feels like she, she can't contribute anymore to the group. I thought that that was like a really clever way of incorporating like the like of the mechanics of changing your job class into like a story. Oh yeah, I love 
that too. She, and she's actually also my favorite character in the series. And I did love that, how they, like you just said, how they had class changes in the series. And that was like the major one. She was kind of like a, a, a warrior mage because she was kind of a mixture of her mom and her dad being uh, a mage and a warrior. And then she, you know, like you said, just did complete class change and went for martial artist and just loved the design uh, on her martial artist suit as well. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. She's a cool one, all right. <laughs> Silver, were you able to effectively use mom in the game? Yeah, I got to use like all versions of her in the party. And that's another thing I liked about the Heroes Bonds. Like you weren't just limited to using one version of her. So like if you wanted to, like let's say you wanted to use her, her magic bullet gun version, you know, that you could stick her in your party. Or if you wanted to have her as a martial artist, you could also have her in your party. Yeah, that's true. So and what did you think of the equipment gotcha element of the game as opposed to a character gotcha mechanic that a game like Dragon Quest Tact uses? I'm really torn on that because I, on the one hand, like I, I like collecting things like weapons and armor in Dragon Quest, but I wasn't crazy about the fact that like they locked away like most of the skills and the special moves behind like all the gotcha equipment. Because to me, I think that the, the game is more interesting when you get to use all the different abilities. I think it's it's more fun and it's more interesting. It's instead of just oh like you're limited to what you only what you have. Mm. Yeah, and gotcha mechanics certainly can make or break a game. Did you think the gotcha in A Hero's Bonds was more or less generous than that of Dragon Quest of the Stars and Tact? I think for most of the game's lifetime, it felt a lot less generous because it just kind of felt like you couldn't really get a lot of that stuff unless you like paid for gems and uh you know i, n- I never put any any money into the game and so i was just kind of limited to like whatever whatever gems they would throw your way but you know once the uh, once the end of service announcement came along and we were getting those daily gems like every day i was like it, i felt like it improved i mean improved a lot but obviously it was a little too late but you know it was cool to that they were giving you like a little allowance to like hey like you, you know go spend on these banners yeah that was insane insane because that's when i got into the game is when they started doing that so you'd get like three at least three thousand gems a day which is a full like 10 pull so yeah <laughs> you could just i ended up getting so many weapons and armor just because they just started throwing gems at you at the end of it i wish stars had done the same thing when it was closing down but like i, I guess to the end they were like whatever <laughs> which is too bad <laughs> so what yeah yeah so what did you think of the action rpg style of the game uh it didn't hook me too much at first just because it felt like it felt like i was like kind of like big babysitting like the game too much but i thought it was a i thought it was a fun and cool way to sort of like translate the action style of the manga and the anime into mobile game mechanics yeah i wasn't that's one of the main reasons why i didn't get into the game that much myself is like i wasn't a huge fan of the way the action kind of played out in the game and uh, i learned from playing stars that i'm not a big fan of the gotcha that involves weapons and and equipment and armor then i remember in stars we always had the joke oh hey we got more look we got more pants just regular pants that do nothing. <laughs> Wahoo. Yeah. Uh, so plus, i like oh go ahead plus one pants <laughs> <laughs> yeah plus one pants. yeah so i like tact in that I, I like having the character gotcha as opposed to the equipment gotcha that's just like my personal thing <laughs> yeah and i also prefer that about tact it is really fun collecting tons of characters as opposed to just tons of lifeless equipment so a hero's bonds had a limited multiplayer function to it what was your impression of the multiplayer oh uh, we only got to do like a little bit of it because I, for a long time it felt like I was playing like kind of like alone. That's another thing that's like a big difference between Tact and the Heroes Bonds is that like so much of the game like you're just playing alone and you know unless you know other people that are playing like you won't get to do multiplayer. But you know the the few times that we did get to do multiplayer it was a lot of fun. So I think it would have been better if, if you know throughout like the lifespan of the game we had we had gotten to experience uh, multiplayer stuff more that was nice a nice experience when i finally got into it i, I noticed that there was a little multiplayer here and there it was somewhat limited we talked about it in some of our tactfully die episodes but yeah it was it was good like it was you and me uh lms and esoterica and i think i forget if it was like the between all of us we did it a few times so that was that was a, a fun time and you know i and i like i said i marathoned the game the last few months it was open i did the i also did the arena a few times but didn't get to do it too much what was that part of the game like and did you enjoy it if you you did play that part of the game. I actually never got to experience the uh, Heroes Bonds Arena because, to be honest, I'm not really like a big fan of PvP combat, and you know, except for like Tact when it feels like they lock away certain stuff behind us. 
was like, well, I guess we got to, like, it's kind of like putting, like, oh, we got to put, put your big boy pants on and do PvP. But I never felt, like, kind of, like, compelled to, to do that stuff in a hero's bonds. That's a fair assessment of how multiplayer works in Tact. Because, yeah, you do need to get some stuff out of it if you're serious about the game. And, yeah, I don't really love PvP either. Pendy is always beating me up in Tact with his rich man's team. Like today. <laughs> Darn you. <laughs> anyway, what did you think of the a hero's bonds story missions that followed the anime. I thought they did a pretty good job of condensing the anime story into these little bite-sized pieces for the game because at one point I was sort of like watching the anime and playing the game at the same time so I'd be watching the episodes like and playing through like the part of the story that was on. So it was cool to see kind of like the side-by-side comparison and I think you could you could tell like the the people behind the game they had put a lot of thought into it and they put a lot of care into like like adapting the, the story. Yeah, I noticed that as well. That was one of the better things about the game. And did you, I'm not going to spoil it for Paul because it involves the end of the, the anime story, but what did you think of that unique final boss fight for like the, the Dragon Tracks part of the game? That part was a little tricky and frustrating to me at first, just like I had said before, like I had been cheesing the story battles because I, you know, basically at that point, like you have like all of your, all of your special moves and stuff and you can sort of, you know, if you have like the right special moves you can basically like wipe through like all the enemies but you know that that battle was interesting because it you know there was a little bit of like you know getting strategy involved in you know knowing knowing when to attack knowing when to defend and things like that but yeah it took me a few tries but yeah it was it was really satisfying once i was able to beat it yeah and it was like a multi-part battle and i remember like the very last part you had like these two two big powerful attacks and one of them would actually give you health as you attacked the boss so that is what the strategy you had to use you that at the right time so that you could survive everything <laughs> but the, it was nice it was it was cool once i was able to, to beat that as well it was enjoyable deliciously vague in addition <laughs> to adapting the anime story a hero's bonds also featured its own original storyline what did you think of the new story created for the game so the stuff with zavala was pretty interesting but uh, i'm gonna admit like sometimes i was just kind of like i was kind of just like clicking through just to get to the battles so i wasn't like reading like intently like every single time like the story stuff would come up but I did think that the stuff with the new villain was interesting and I also like these little character episodes that you could get like if you had uh, basically if you used characters enough in your team like you would get these little like side stories with them and I thought that that was really cool like especially like characters that you didn't get to see much throughout the story like you know like here's you know like here's Flazard inter- you know, interacting with the uh, other members of your team and I like that part of sort of like helps flesh out these characters that you wouldn't have even gone to interact with normally. It was really interesting because like you said, you get all these, like especially like when you get all the bosses, all the bad guys that would come and join your team too. That was interesting because like the story, in the story basically you've got this mascot Pinky and he, you know, brings you in to this other world where you're trying to battle Zavalo and, and help the, the alternate world of, of, of die that you're in. And so you get like Hadlar that joins your team and you get Flazard and all these other characters and they're fighting amongst each other and it's great i thought that interaction between everybody was was cool and interesting that you know you obviously didn't get in the original storyline but you know how did you how did you do with the final boss beating zavalo for the storyline how did how did that go because for me i was not able to do it i got to the final boss you had to fight zavalo in two different fights the first fight took me a good half hour of just trying over and over and over and over again finally beat him and then in the second fight like the actual final boss fight with him it is super complicated and you have like you know, you have your, your side characters that help you attack too. And at one point he will paralyze both side characters and they'll be on left and the right hand side of the, the board that you're on. And he has like four or five different attacks and you have to dodge it just right. And you have to hit him when a certain icon comes on him, which if you hit him at this at the right time, he'll get pushed back. And you have to do this three times in a row for him to finally release your other characters and be able to fight him uh, regularly again. That took me forever to try and get that pattern down because it would be random like which ones which attacks he would throw at you I finally did it hit him three times in a row pushed him back started to hit him again then he just does his big super attack wipes out the entire party in one blow so I was like oh okay I don't think this is going to work this is I'm I'm too under leveled I wasn't able to get we'll, we'll talk about the way you level up your characters later in the episode but I wasn't able to max level all my characters and I don't think I was strong enough to beat him unfortunately so how was your how was your luck with that? Well Pandy I was actually stuck in the same boat as you uh i was <laughs> i was only 
were able to be the so-called the first form of Zvala. Mm. And I think I probably tried against the second form maybe about four or five times. Basically, same experience as you. Like, I, you know, you get you get close enough to try beating him, but it just feels like a hopeless boss battle. And yeah, I think after a certain point, I was like, I, you know, I was kind of feeling the same way. Like, my, my characters weren't at the max level. So I was like, well, I could sort of, like, beat myself up and try maxing everyone's levels out or, you know, just kind of like call it a day and be like, well, that's a, just sort of like throw in the towel and just sort of like be okay with, you know, how, how however far I was able to get. And we'll just we'll just all watch the real ending on YouTube and we'll be good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, guys, that was a detailed account. I almost felt like I was there. <laughs> now then, Pinky, a Heroes Bond's unique mascot character, is a pink Drackey who wears makeup or something. Do you, Silver, lover, hater, is she the worst Dragon Quest mascot ever? Or do you agree with Pendy that she's the sexiest one? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly towards, I'm mostly neutral towards her, but leaning slowly towards the negative, and I'm so torn because obviously I said that <laughs> Drakis are my favorite monster, but this is not good Draki representation. No. She, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> she, kind of, she kind of feels like the, like, sort of like the, if you're familiar with the Sims, she's kind of like the Poochie of the Die universe. It's like, let's have this character who's never showed up before and let's have, have her interact with everybody oh god that is that is too much of a good comparison <laughs> poochie <laughs> oh poor poochie yeah i'm i'm i just not a big fan of her design either like as a character she was all right but that was just one weird draggy design that was or just or mascot design and because people were, were were laughing about what was the name of the squirrel and stars i can't remember oh me like, neither don't miss oh, them, um cyrus yeah cyrus or, or something cyril? like this. Pe- yeah. cyril that was cyril? it cyril yeah, so people were complaining squirrel. about <laughs> yeah, Cyril, Cyril with his X-ray specs. Yeah, because I remember people would complain about Cyril, but like this, this Drackey just takes the cake when it comes to weird-looking Grand Quest characters. <laughs> <laughs> she but made you know, her way back to her home planet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> finally, you know, a Drackey you can make out with. <laughs> oh God! Oh no! Don't don't put. Oh my God! <laughs> anyways, anyways, speaking of mascots, the developer would occasionally do a video to announce new features for a Heroes Bond. They came up with a VTuber mascot called Billy who was this unique Man of War Dragon Quest character with a fish for a hat. And he and another host would introduce the new features. Did you ever watch any of those videos? They were called Billy's Bonding Station videos. I actually never watched those videos, but I was familiar with Billy because I remember uh, Liquid Metal Slime telling us about these videos, and I was kind of amused by it, but I never decided to seek out the videos and watch them. The videos sound really weird, but Billy is kind of cool looking. So, did you like a hero Bond's character building mechanics, such as the skill tree system? Not particularly. That is actually one of my biggest frustrations with the game. It's not like in Tact, where you just throw experience scrolls at your character, or you, you do missions and whatever, and can you can sometimes level up your character pretty quickly. With this, you have a whole skill tree, and there's all these different types of materials that you have to gather to build them up, so you can't level up characters quickly whatsoever. And, and, and for, for those materials that you had to farm, like how difficult was it to farm all those materials for your characters, for building up your characters and equipment. I thought it was really tedious, especially like early in the game when you're you're not very powerful and you you're really limited in stamina. And at that time, I remember talking to uh, Liquid Metal Slime at the time and just being sort of like frustrated because the game is kind of obtuse about like where and how to get those some of those items, and there there didn't seem to be a lot of online resources for the game. That's a shame. Quick aside, Pinky, the the pink dragon. Mm-hmm. She's totally the equivalent of the girl gremlin from Gremlins 2, don't you think? Oh, yeah, I could see that. It's yeah. the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> just the same awful nightmare inducing thing. Yes. Yeah, yes. just all made up against, <laughs> you know, against all reason. Yes. So, Sylv, what were your overall impressions of the art and music for the game? I thought that the models for the characters and monsters look really good, and they did a really good job of matching the style of the new anime. And of course, the music 
is all really good. It, obviously, the music is all from the from the new anime. Yeah. Yes, and then they have the two songs that they came up with for the game as well, which we'll have as our opening and our closing, which I thought were really cool. They, I think they, I, the LMS was talking to us about it, how they found the the uh, singer to to get to do those two songs, but it was pretty good. I liked I liked the music that they came up with, and and, it, and like you said, it's the music from the anime, which was pretty good in itself. So it was, it was good stuff. And I also liked like the art, like you said, the art style is really good. And then every once in a while, they would make their own like unique background art for different uh, parts of the game, and I thought that looked really good too. That was fun to see. Yeah, I remember like you would be like in the middle of a battle, and all of a sudden like the like that opening music would kick in. It's kind of like you're like basically doing like you're basically in like an anime, and you're it's like when like the like the theme the theme music kicks in. That's oh yeah, I remember that. Some of the harder bosses would have that. Like you get to a really tough boss, and yeah, and that that anime song would kick in. And you'd be like, oh, it's just like I'm in the show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So they had different events, special events that they would do. For example, uh, I saw the Avon event, which they made as a permanent event until the game closed. Uh, what did you think of those? Those were pretty fun, but you know, like you, I wasn't, I wasn't being kind of like consistent with the game, so uh, I only got to play through a few of them. Like I remember, I played through Flazard's recruitment event. I played through Nova's. This is uh, the Nova one was was kind of when I was starting to get back into the game, and they were pretty fun. But you know, it kind of it's kind of a shame that they're so limited, and they never they actually never brought any of those back. So uh, just a little bit disappointing that they didn't give people that you know, like if you, it was basically like you know you you snooze you lose. So basically, you'd have to like keep up with the game to you know you get you get your free characters, and then you get like the little like event story. Yeah, that is too bad. Were you surprised that the developers shut the game down so soon, or did you not expect it to last as long as it did? I hate to say it, but I think that the writing was always kind of on the wall for this game, especially like when the anime was starting to wrap up. In my mind, I thought to myself, well, well, this game is probably like on its way out. But I do think that it lasted a little bit longer than I was expecting it to. And, I, you know, I was surprised that they, they actually got to the end of the anime story, which was cool. Like they were able to adapt all the story. And, you know, towards the end, it, I was a little upset just because I think that they had actually like taken steps to you know give they gave us a lot of these quality of life improvements you know like they were basically like they were basically like throwing stamina at us and you know you were getting getting gems like every day so but you know by that point it's just kind of like well like you the game's about to end so it's kind of like too little too late so what's your theory on why the game shut down my theory at least is that this game needed to be more accessible to more people and not rely so much on gotcha systems because die has a lot of fans but i just don't think that this game was on a lot of people's radars and you know it felt weighed down by all these sort of like bad things that people think of when they when they think of mobile games so i think that a lot of people had you know if even if they did know about the game a lot of people had written it off and also i think that dragon quest of the stars was still like fresh on people's minds the end of the end of dragon quest of the stars international server so i think that there was still a little bit of like bitterness and resentment like hey like you know we're missing out on stars for this this game because i you know a lot of people do a lot of dragon quest do like die but i don't think it the like the like the venn diagram is not a, a complete circle because i do think that there's people that like dragon quest but they might not be into die and so a little bit of bitterness of like you know why would i play this game when you know i don't i know a lot of i know the people that like stars were very passionate about it and they're really disappointed when stars sort of like disappeared yeah you know there's still people who refuse to play tact because of stars shutting down i mean tact is quite popular but you know there's those few people who took it extra personally for whatever reason it's it's not that big a deal to me like you know every every free-to-play mobile game will eventually shut down you know and you have to just play it with knowing that and and being comfortable with it but some people i guess they just didn't think of that that would eventually happen so it, it took them too off guard or whatever yeah i think so too unless you're in japan and you're playing Dragon quest monster super light which has been been around for nine years 
years. <laughs> it's going to hit yeah. a decade. That's insane. Insane. That is very impressive. But yeah, worldwide, it's a different market. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, Silver, what did you enjoy most about a hero's spawns? I really liked getting to use all the different characters. And it was nice getting to be able to use all these side characters like Merle, Larhar, Matori. Basically, the our hero's bonds gave them a chance to shine. You know, it wasn't just, you know, play as die, pop, ma'am. Like you like felt like everyone was kind of like given their own chance to sort of like play a part. And, you know, if like let's say like you had been a fan of die for a long time. Like, hey, like, you know, this character is my favorite. Now I get to play as them. I remember my team. Uh, most of the time I had like Dragonoid, Baron, I had Crocodine. I had all these characters. I had ma'am. I had all these characters that I loved, at, which, like you said, weren't necessarily main cast characters that you'd see in every episode. Episode and you could you could you could have them in your party and that was great. Very interesting thing about this game that at least in my limited experience of playing gotcha games I had not seen before. They had an ad system and if you watched a little ad you could get bonus stamina or you could get like free gotcha pulls. What did you what did you think of that? That part actually gave me a little bit of pause because to me it never feels like a good sign when games start asking you to watch ads for stuff. You know I you know I've, I've played a few fair amount of like gotcha games and just sort of mobile games in general and usually you know at the end of the day it's it realizes it's this business you know they're they want you to watch ads but the free stamina is always nice but yeah like i've definitely played other other mobile games and it just i don't know it feels a, it feels a little bit scummy i mean i know that it's you know it's obviously it's business but yeah it feels a little bit weird when the game is like i think that the ads were always there from the very beginning yeah i, I don't remember i, th- I want to say i want to say they instituted them not from day one but like a little bit after it had been open for a while but i could be wrong since i didn't play it all the time yeah i wouldn't i'm not 100 percent sure either as for me i actually don't mind when mobile games have optional ads that you can click on if you want some stuff and if you don't have the time or you just hate ads then you can ignore them hmm. now then another adventure of die game is on the horizon a full console release called infinity strash are you looking forward to trying that game out when it comes out in the fall yeah i'm i'm looking forward to it i, I do want to give it its fair shot and it's going to be obviously it's going to be different from a hero's bond so but i'm still you know i'm still going to have a hero's bonds in the back of my mind but i am hoping that it's it's going to be fun in its own way and I'm hoping that at least like if they take anything from a hero's bonds it's that they give the, all the characters in the stories their own chance to shine too. That'd be neat. Nice. So before we go we're going to read some memorial messages from some other a hero's bonds fans. First we'll read what fellow Dragon's Den member Liquid Metal Slime had to say. Man that's a hard one to mispronounce. <laughs> anyway <laughs> he says the game had potential but lacked development time and budget. The final months with all the quality of life and drop improvements show this. If they'd had that generosity throughout the game, I think most players would have enjoyed it more. The low amount of drops and high stamina costs were pretty horrible. The graphics and art style were fantastic. The 2D art was weird sometimes, but good overall. There were some translation inconsistencies that irked me, especially in relation to the Sacred Lord weapons from Dragon Quest X and Stars. They renamed each Sacred Lord they added to the game. Hierophant Sword, Righteous Spear, Sacred Lord Wand. Wow! In the music department, it was good, as it took 98% of its songs from the new anime. I didn't really enjoy many of the new designs it introduced. Most of the equipment looked oddly overcomplicated. The characters were nothing special either, but I did like the design for Velta the Mage from Bonding Journey. I quite enjoyed my time using a mage who'd cast Cockrack on all enemies. But as I said, there were too many flaws in this game. I also won't ever forgive Square Enix for seemingly killing stars for this. There are similarities equipment gotcha, ugly pink mascot, vocations, etc. But this game was much more single player focused. They could have coexisted like in Japan, in my opinion. All that said, I think the final chapter of Dragon Tracks was worth the wait. Definitely the most enjoyable fight in the whole game. Wish all of the heroes' bonds looked as good as this fight did. It also let you play a whole new character before you even unlocked it. Really cool stuff. A shame it ended so soon, but that's the curse of anime tie-in games. I'm afraid. Thank you, Liquid Metal Slime. We'll finish up with a reflection by our resident Avon enthusiast, Esoterica. I'd never been really hyped for a gacha game before this. All the pre-release materials made it sound absolutely amazing for a mega fan of Dai. Original story supervised by Sanjo, a customizable main character. Level up your bonds for new scenes with your favorite characters. I'm pretty sure I joked about an Avon 
dating sim at least once. The reality turned out to be a bit underwhelming, as it often does. A Hero's Bond was a massively flawed game with loads of potential. It's a game I could rarely recommend to others, but often had a blast playing. A game that frustrated and delighted me in equal measure. It truly felt like the staff had a lot of love and reverence for both Die and Dragon Quest in general, and it's a shame the game was never able to fully reach the potential it had, save for brief, dazzling glimmers. I think I will find its somewhat short existence fascinating for as long as I remain a fan of Dragon Quest. There's a lot to reminisce about, and it's difficult for me to remain brief. So I'll give a quick shout out to all the gorgeous special move animations, the original weapon and armor designs, and the time the game was forced to spoil a major story event due to the toy hack delaying the anime for weeks and wreaking havoc on planned promotional events. Also, you could have your favorite die characters greet you for the day, check in via notifications if you hadn't played for a while, and praise you for doing a good job after completing quests. They really nailed that fan service. Here's to hoping Infinity Strash can carry the die game torch for fans of the series. But for better or worse, the game will never have Pinky or the baffling Gomechan slurp sticker. That's it for this episode of Slime Time. We'd like to thank Silver Aphelion for being here. Uh, thank you guys for having me. No problem. And we'd like to thank Erotica and Liquid Metal Slime, I mean Esoterica and Liquid Metal Slime, for submitting their final thoughts on the game. We're a non-profit podcast. We won't half-inch your heart hard-earned gold when we can offer you quality content for free. But if you do have some extra gold that's just completely burning a hole in your wallet, pouch, bottomless bag, treasure chest, or searchable wall sack, and you would like to donate anything to a website that's been supporting Dragon Quest fans for over 25 years, stop by the Dragon's Den by clicking the link in the show notes. There are several ways to support the Den, including the affiliate links that don't cost you anything extra when making other Dragon Quest purchases. Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at DQ Slime Time. Join in tons of Dragon Quest discussion at the Dragon's Den forums or Discord and the Dragon Questers Infinity Strash and Dragon Quest Tact Global Facebook groups. And you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash eastxtwitch. Come watch me play a variety of games every Saturday, kids. Getting back to Dragon Quest, we'd like to thank everyone that made this podcast possible, including Woodus, the Dragon's Den, and Pinky's odd taste in makeup that Pinty loves so much. Lies, all lies. Our thanks to the delicious Dwayne Bullock, our wonderful graphic artist and fellow Dragon Quest fan, for creating our awesome Slime Time art and logo. Check out more of his work at Dwayne Art on Instagram or on DwayneBullockArt.BigCartel.com. For a Slime Time t-shirt featuring Dwayne's art, check out the link in our show notes. Please like, subscribe, and write a glow review for the podcast. If you are looking for more Dragon Quest Slime Time, check out our earlier episodes on Dragon's Den, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, YouTube, and more. And check out our brothers and sisters in arms over at the Slime Time SideQuest and Tactfully Die Podcast, all part of the Slime Time Extended Universe, or Stu! Their latest episodes are available now. We'll catch you later, everybody. Don't hate. Appreciate. Dragon Quest Slime Time, sliming off.
This is Gutrude for Slime Time, reminding you all that you must complete your adventure.